Hey there, my name is Provis, and welcome to The Wandering Village. This is a brand new survival colony builder that just went into early access a couple of weeks ago. I've been playing around with it a bit today, and I have to say, so far, I'm pretty impressed. Yes, it does have a lot of very familiar game mechanics and some tropes that you might expect from similar titles in the genre, but it has a couple of very unique and interesting ideas and aesthetics that are really going to set this game apart from some of its competitors. I think you guys are going to like it. So let's go ahead and jump into a new game at a regular difficulty, and I'll show you what this is all about. Now, the story of this game is we are playing as nomadic humans. We are constantly having to leave our home to flee from toxic spore clouds that are floating above the surface of the planet. Along our travels, we stumble upon this gentle giant, a huge monstrosity named Anbu, and we're going to climb high on his back, high above the spore clouds, and we have a chance at rebuilding a human civilization. So here we are. Now, if I zoom out a little bit, you'll notice we're kind of limited in some space. If I zoom out even further, you'll understand why. Yeah, there we go. When I say that we are building upon the pack of a giant monster, I am not kidding. Say hey to Ambu. He's sleeping right now, so he's not very active, but don't worry. He'll eventually get up and start wandering around. For now, let's go ahead and start tending to some of our needs. Now, at the very beginning of the game, there are three different resources you'll need to pay attention to. There's wood, there's stone, and then there are these berry bushes. This is going to be your primary source of early food, so we want to make sure we set up our base kind of close to a bunch of these bushes. Now, we could start harvesting a bunch of resources right off the bat, but if you harvest a berry bush, you actually destroy it. What I need to do is make sure that under this food tab over here, I'm able to set up some of these berry gatherers. These guys will sustainably start gathering up all of the berries, and they will not destroy them. So one right over here, for example, seems very, very effective. I'm going to go ahead and place one right over there, and I could destroy a couple of berry bushes to get a really good spot right up over here as well. Knowing that this is where I'm going to be getting a lot of my food, let's go ahead and start planning out some of the base. So you can place down a bunch of roads, as would be expected. We'll do something kind of like this, get these all set up, and we'll need to get some housing set up for all of our people. A tent is all we have at the beginning of the game, and this is a house for only two villagers. We currently have 16 people who are living in this colony, so we're going to need a lot more than this. Uh, I'm going to build this kind of far away from the berry, because I think we're going to have a lot of storage and cooking and stuff over here. For now, why don't we set up some additional roads? We'll go down this way, and maybe a quick little street right over here. And this is where I'm going to place down eight tents. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Should be good to start. All right. So let's let all of our people start going off and building all of this to get us going. So they're going to gather up whatever resources we currently have, and here we go. You can see all the little animations and sprites. Now, it's interesting to me that the people have a slightly different art style from the rest of the world around it. I think some people might find that a little off-putting. I find it kind of endearing. So they're going to go around and do their thing, but the animations are pretty on point. Let's go ahead and speed the game up to speed 4, because that is the maximum speed, and let them do their thing. Here we go, this is looking pretty good. Now, if they're bored and have nothing to do, let's also go ahead and set up some harvest rules. So rather than harvest everything, because I don't want to harvest these berry bushes, let's go ahead and narrow this down. I want to harvest some trees, so let's say all of these to start off nearby will be just fine and dandy. I'd also like to gather up some stone, these little guys over here. We'll have more ways of exploiting some stone and some wood later on, but for now, this should do just fine. Let's go over to storage. I would like to set down some material storage, so let's say one right there for now will be fine. I'm going to need things like water tanks and pantries as well. Um, I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to leave behind, I think, three spaces for a kitchen later. Let's see if we can set up one pantry right over here and maybe one water tower right over here. All right. Lots to build, don't you worry. There are other things to worry about, though. We have a worker post. Now, this is where you can have your people, instead of just being unemployed people who kind of go around and get, do whatever odd jobs are remaining, like harvesting resources or carrying materials around, you can have worker posts where you can actually tell people to, uh, you know, either be directly carriers, harvesters, builders, and they'll get a slight movement and carrying bonus for being employed properly at a worker post. So it's definitely worth building at least one of these up early on. We'll do that. There's also going to be a research building. I'll come back to this in a little bit, but there is a tech tree that we'll use to make ourselves a little bit more effective. The other tabs here are mostly going to be pretty empty, at least for now. There's a lot more that we're going to be able to unlock later. We could consider setting up a farm sometime soon. Probably not right now, though. We should be getting lots of berries in the early game. We will need to get an air well. Now, this is how you're going to be extracting some water from the air, collecting rain. 
Now, this is the only real way of getting water because, as you would imagine, you're on top of a beast's back. There's not exactly a flowing river or anything. So you're heavily dependent on the climate and the uh, weather as you are traveling. Lots of air wells are going to make things a little bit easier, but if you're going to travel through a desert, you may need to find some other options. But we'll come back to all of that, don't you worry. We've set up our first berry gatherer. So some of our unemployed workers have now walked over here to the berry gatherer. You can see they changed their outfit, and now they are gathering up some of the berries. So this is going to be some of our early game food. They'll drop it off over here, but once we do have things like a pantry set up, they can drop things over here as well. Ah, now we have a worker post, and you can assign some extra workers over here. I might as well have five assigned here, because that's uh, basically the exact same uh, thing as having my unemployed workers, as long as they're set to general. They'll do the exact same jobs, but they'll do so a little bit more effectively. We could swap them between being builders, carriers, or harvesters. Dedicated types of workers if we want. But for now, general will suit me just fine. Now that we have an air well set up, gathering up some water for us, let's go ahead and build up our first research building. So now we can choose some research. Now it's going to present two options. These are the recommended options for you. If you want to, you can look at the open the research tree option here, and this gives you a better idea of what things you're able to research that are going to make you more effective as time goes on. So for now, we have access to upgrades for the village. For example, build out a kitchen so that we will be able to make processed food out of the raw stuff that we are currently harvesting harvesting. We can also unlock different types of crops and ways to use that. We can have upgrades, for example, uh, better scouting, better roads, more storage, and so on. If you look over here under resources, we can see things that we can start gathering, including Ombu's poop, which sounds really gross, but it's actually kind of useful, turning that into compost or perhaps some way of uh, creating a gas we can use to decontaminate our base later on. We'll also get new ways of getting wood, some stone, and so on. Then there's upgrades specifically for Anbu. If we get a Hornblower, we'll have a chance to issue some commands to him. He may or may not choose to follow those orders depending on how much he trusts us, and things we do to take care of Anbu are going to build that trust. We'll come back to some of this. For now, I think getting a kitchen set up makes a lot of sense. Now what's this? Are we moving? Oh yes we are. Let's go ahead and zoom out. Anbu is on the way! He's actually walking over a bed of feathers. He normally would take a nap here, but uh, he's already pretty rested. So Anbu over here has health and he has certain um, metrics that you want to pay attention to. As he walks through the toxic uh, spore clouds, he can get poisoned as well and we'll have to be able to provide antidotes and keep this down low, otherwise he'll start taking damage. He also gets hungry over time. He'll forage if he can find anything, otherwise we'll have to provide food for him, and he does get tired and at some point need to take a bit of a nap. It's important to manage all of these because you need Anbu to be in very good health. He is the only way you're going to survive. Without Anbu, you're as good as dead. So, uh, take good care of your buddy. Now, if we zoom out, you can see what he's currently doing. We are walking down a path. Eventually, we'll get to little forks in the road, and we have opportunities to try and direct him one way or the other. Along here, you already saw some feather beds. He's actually heading towards some food right now along the path. We might stop to actually fulfill his hunger needs, or maybe not. There's some more nomads we might be able to pick up, and then there's all these other little points of interest on the world map. We'll eventually have the ability to start scouting and sending out teams to go and uh, gather up resources or perhaps some people, or whatever else, I don't know, from all these different points of interest. Looks like he's not taking a uh, break for any food. All right, Anbu, uh, that's on you. It may be a while before you find anything, but hopefully you are prepared for that. Oh, here's an example of where we can go ahead and start scavenging some materials. Yes, I'll go ahead and start researching that. So now under food, we have access to a kitchen. Dang it, I was wrong. It's a four by four. Ah, boo. I'm getting rid of this pantry and moving it. Sorry, I just, I like having good aesthetics. Set up a uh, kitchen right here. There we go. And then we'll move a pantry right next door. Bit of a waste of resources, but okay. So the kitchen is where we're gonna take some of these berries. I think we take like three berries and turn it into five processed food, which is a slightly higher quality. So that's gonna help meet a lot of our early game food needs by simply making our food stretch further. And also, if we click on our population details over here, we can see the current needs of our people. Now, while our population is very low, the needs are extremely low. So we don't have much uh, expectations. They don't really need anything. They just need some food. They just need some housing. At some point, the quality of that housing and the food and the diversity of their food is going to start mattering to them as well. Now, of course, if we want to get this kitchen, we need some other resources. We need wooden planks and we need stone slabs. And this is where some refined resources comes into play. We've got a carpenter and we have a stone cutter. Um, I don't really want to destroy any of these berry bushes. I don't mind destroying one down over here, though. 
Let's try placing, let's say, the carpenter and the stone cutter right along like this. And what they're going to do, of course, is take some of our logs or our stone and turn them into their respective refined resource. Now, I do want to point out over here, we just got a little notification we're walking through cold weather. If we jump back out to the map, you can see we are walking through a small cold snap. Every once in a while, you're going to run into some little hazards on the road, and that might help direct you which way you want to go down the fork. Do you want to avoid, let's say, a giant dust devil or a cold snap that's going to kill all of your crops? Kind of up to you. So always be checking on the map periodically and watching for what kind of challenges are coming down the pipe. Now that we have access to a scavenger hut, we're going to go ahead and start researching the horn blower so I can try to issue some orders to Ambu. But again, Ambu may or may not choose to obey that. For example, I'd really like Ambu to go ahead and take this route. There's some place to sleep and there's some food, which can meet some of your needs. But even if I issued those orders, he may choose not to obey. Just depends on how much that Ambu trusts us. And it makes some sense, right? Ambu doesn't know us. We're just some tiny little critters just crawled up on his back and are doing things up there without his say-so. But, fortunately, if we can meet some of his needs, we'll find that this is a symbiotic relationship. We put our faith in Ambu, and Ambu puts his faith in us. So Ambu, for example, did decide to go down this route. Now, it turns out there's some nomads down here, so I guess that's not the worst thing ever. I do actually want to have a larger population. Population ends up being one of those things that can really start to slow you down, because as far as I'm aware, there isn't a natural... Uh, like population growth mechanic people don't have children I believe we have to find more nomads so if you get very unlucky you find yourself in a situation where you can't continue to expand which means you can't work more jobs and really progress very far in the game so finding more nomads you know yeah it comes with more mouths to feed but I'm pretty sure we can use that effectively and we'll be fine Speaking of meals, if you look up over here, just a minute ago we had some arrows that were pointing down. Now they're, well, just barely started to point up. This is kind of an indicator as to whether you're keeping up with your meals or not. If you see two downward arrows, it means you're really starting to burn through it. So pay attention. Overproducing food, as far as I can tell, is fine. I don't think there's such a thing as food spoilage in this game. At the same time, it means you're probably spending so much labor on uh, food that you're wasting it elsewhere. So be aware of that. Village Doctor is helpful if our uh, population does start getting poisoned, which can happen even if we are high up like this. Sometimes the spore clouds really do get pretty high up there, but uh, I don't think we need this quite yet. Cactus plantations though, would that make a lot of sense? Yeah, I guess we can go ahead and start working on the cactus plantation. So as you may notice, if you look out on the map here, we've got a lot of this pink area right now, but some of this green indicates that there's another biome elsewhere. There are a few different kinds out there, including arid uh, desert biomes. And you'll need to pay attention for those because, well, you may find out that you're not really gathering any water because you're relying on the uh, natural moisture in the air. This is where the cactus comes in. You'll have the ability to place down a quick little farm. And if you want to start growing some cactus, hey, look, another way of getting some water. Kitchen should be coming online right about now. Perfect. Okay. So we're going to have somebody working over here and making this very... Muesli? However you say that, I have no idea. But that's going to take, again, three berries, turn it into five food, not so bad. I've also set up a little farm over here, and you can kind of see the workable radius in this area. You do not need to set up massive farms. This is not all something that can be worked by only, like, you know, two, three, four people. Uh, at the very beginning, having just a small little plot should be just fine. So let's go ahead and set up, eh, maybe not over there, because I might actually use this space later. Let's set up some small little plots over here, for example. This is about as much as I think one person realistically can handle, and even then, that's a bit much. So we're gonna start planting down some beets. Eventually, we have access to things like the cactus. I already explained some of that. We'll also have access to corn or tomatoes or some wheat, maybe, that we can turn into bread. Beets are gonna do just fine at the very beginning of the game, but you may have already noticed we have the ability to make a beet soup at some point. So that might be something we want to set up a second kitchen for later to get even more value out of our food. Now, if you want to have a doctor, something we'll need is an herbalist. This functions exactly the same as a farmer, but instead we're going to be planting down some herbs which we can use as medicine. I don't mind setting one up down over here, it's just not going to be a very high priority. We can also get a mycologist. Now this has to be planted on some of this dirty area over here, but you can grow mushrooms. Now the mushrooms are not for you. They are a special food that Ambu likes to eat, and if we grow mushrooms and then process them into Ambu food, which we already saw right over here, there it is, the Ambu kitchen, we'll be able to make some giant food pellets that we literally will trebuchet right into his mouth. I kid you not. 
Now, as our population has grown above 20, this is where you're gonna start seeing some of the needs coming into play. So right now, our food quality is mm, questionable, apparently. And as a result, our productivity has gone down a little bit. This is gonna get harder and harder the larger we grow. Looks like Ambu just found some fresh food. Excellent, a whole bunch of wild mushrooms. So there he is. Look at him, he's so cute. He's just lapping them right up. We like Ambu. Ambu is our friend. Scavenger is finally done. Okay, just took a bunch more of those stone slabs and some wooden planks. So now, if I wanna bump out over here, we can start exploring a lot of these points of interest. For example, there's gonna be this ruined settlement over here. Now, it says no party available. I just had to wait for people to arrive. Now, we could go ahead and send them over here. There might be some survivors. Let's go ahead and send them. They're gonna form a quick expedition party. I don't think it takes any resources. And then they're going to launch this. And you can now see that there is a progress bar that is filling up. Oh, see, they're back and they just brought back 21 bread. Okay, I mean, I don't really have a lot of need for some bread, but okay. Ambu, don't stop right before the bed. I know you're tired, but there's literally a bed right here. You're wasting a great opportunity. Oy vey. All right, um, we're gonna go ahead and send some parties to some forests and start gathering up some of the wood that is in that area. I may want to go ahead and build up the horn blower and then just basically harass this guy until he wakes up. You have to place the horn blower kind of closer to his head. So we'll place it right up over here. Oh yeah, big yawn, big yawn, uh-huh, uh-huh. The, the feather bed is literally right here, dude. You just had to take like three more steps and you would have regenerated your sleep like way faster. Come on, buddy. There, the horn is built. Now from here, I can start making some commands. So for example, walk Ambu, wake up. He's like, no, I don't want to, wake up. There we go, that's right, you get up, you little Ambu monster. There's a much better spot right here. I don't even know if he's gonna take advantage of it. But now I think he's pouting because he's just kind of plodding really slowly. Ah, uh, the Anbu feeding trebuchet. Yes, I mean, whenever in doubt, if you have the option to research a trebuchet, the answer is always going to be yes. Let's go ahead and build a dung collector down over here. Yes, it is exactly what it sounds like. We have a giant crane that whenever he evacuates his bowels, which does happen on occasion, as you can see down here in the bottom left, uh, we can gather up his poop. We can use that for compost, which makes our farming more effective, and that is obviously pretty good. We'll also eventually be able to refine that into biogas, and biogas is a way of warding off all of the uh, toxic spores, and that can be very, very important. We'll explain more about why in a bit. Don't forget to keep checking back on your scavengers, by the way. It's pretty easy to forget, but this is one of the best ways to get some additional resources, like wood, like stone, because you have a very limited uh, supply on the back of Ambu, so this is a good way to just kind of keep padding up your coffers a little bit. Plus, you know, other things. For example, here's an iron mine. Have I used any iron yet? Nope, but will I in the future? Sure, same thing with sand. Maybe we can start making some glass. I don't know, here's an oasis if you need some water, and since it looks like we're about to go through a desert, thanks for that, Ambu, then, uh, yeah, I mean, making uh, some extra water from the oases could be kind of good for me. Yeah, and you can see here now, our air well has greatly dropped in its productivity. Practically nothing left here at all. So, uh, yeah, make sure you have a good stockpile of water. Otherwise, problems abound. Let's go ahead and just go to the oasis, might as well. 17 extra bread? Mm. Really was hoping to find some extra nomads. Already I've kind of hit that state where I can't really continue growing in a lot of the production I want to with the population I've got. And that's one of the real challenges of this game, I think, is there are gonna be several occasions where you're gonna need to be able to turn certain uh, research uh, buildings off or maybe reduce the number of workers in a worker post, etc., in order to start boosting up something you're gonna need right, right now. Whether that be food or extra refined materials, who knows, really. But I find that's one of the real tricks of the game, It's just balance out that workforce. Uh, looks like Ambu found another little place for a nap. That's fine. It's comfortable. There's none of the uh, poison in the air, so that works out fine. At some point, we'll have the ability to even tell him when we want him to sleep, which is going to be very important if we know we're about to get into a really nasty stretch where he can't uh, stay still for very long at all. If we take a look at the research up over here, you can see what some of those commands will be. Sleep, eat. We can even pet Ambu in order to get some extra trust with the guy. You might also be wondering, what are some of these little symbols right here? There's a one, there's a two, there's even a four down 
down this way. These are knowledge points, and basically, most of these uh, technology been, we've been researching so far, all you need is a couple of your research buildings, let the scientists do their thing, you'll be fine. But some of these techs are special. You're going to need to get some points and discover them by scavenging shrines on the overworld in order to buy out this tech. So for example, if I uh, explore two shrines, I'll get two knowledge points, then I can start researching the Ombu Food Liquifier. But if I don't have any knowledge points, well, too bad. Nothing for you to do. Looks like we're currently walking right through a light thunderstorm. Now what I can do is ask Ombu to make a run, which he's doing right now. He's going about as fast as he can. I'm hoping to avoid this before it hits because it can destroy a whole bunch of my buildings. And I think we may have just barely, oh, he doesn't trust me. Can you please slow down? Dude, you really don't need to go this fast anymore. You can slow down. You can slow down, Ombu. Okay, I've made two, okay, he's starting to get peeved at me. All right, fair enough. Um, all right, if you wanna just jog, I guess, I just, I guess go for it, but that's not quite what I wanted you to do. Ombu's really not working with me today, is he? Well, the result is he's getting really tired really fast. He's tuckering himself out, and now he's just going to lay down and take a nap. Mm-hmm. All right, well, this is a bit of a problem because there's toxicity on the ground. And um, if there's toxicity on the ground and he lies down, we are now exposed, which means my people are going to be starting to get poisoned as time goes on. This is why I had to build up a village doctor. We're going to use some of those herbs that I have been farming to deal with people. Uh, Ambu himself is going to start getting sick a little bit as time goes on, too. So, yeah, this could have been avoided, Ambu, but you didn't listen to me, so of course you're going to suffer. Oh, there we go. Finally, a chance to eat. Now, I really hope these aren't toxic mushrooms or anything. Really, really hope that's not the case. Toxicity can become a major threat for your crops at some point. If you find yourself in a situation where the toxicity becomes very high, uh, these crops can become poisoned and blighted, and they start spreading the infection all around them, like a like a giant uh, mushroom mycelium or something like that. You know, they are spores after all. And at that point, you're kind of in trouble. You're going to have to uh, find a way to harvest them and get rid of them, though you risk eating them and getting sick, or you're going to have to decontaminate, which is a research that we have not had to mess with yet, but we will at some point. The decontaminator is what I'm currently researching. This would take either biogas or onbu bile, which is something we'll be able to extract from him with an extractor, which he will not find very pleasant, but we can, in order to start burning that stuff away. Hey, onbu buddy, I hear you're still a little bit hungry. I can help with that. Let's go to the feeding thing here, and I'm going to launch some food, all right? Now, somebody is going to be bringing a pellet over to this trebuchet. He's going to hop in there, and if I zoom out, we can see in a second. Pew! Ow! <laughs> Happy Anbu. That's going to reduce his hunger by, I think it's 20%. And on top of that, it actually boosts up some of his trust as well. So the more we're taking care of him, now he'll start taking care of us. I hope. Right, Anbu? Right, buddy? I really like that you can see your entire village in full action right up here on top of Anbu's back. Like, that's a pretty cool little trick right there, honestly, isn't it? Uh, being able to see all this animated. They could have just done something really lazy here and shown nothing but the buildings, but the people are moving around and everything. And even if you do zoom in over here, if you want to just go ahead and watch the overside as uh, Ambu walks by, like, it's all interconnected. It's clever camera work. I really like it. Oh, this is gonna hurt. Thanks, Ambu. You're walking directly into a strong thunderstorm and a whole bunch of buildings collapse. Wow, that's like almost everything gone. Ah, oh, God, Anbu, why don't you work with me? Why won't you slow down when I tell you to, Anbu? I defended you, Anbu. I told the audience that you were lovable, but you're just being awful to me. Anbu, why are you walking into another desert biome? He's trying to kill me. That's what it is. I decided, you know what? I've, I've done everything I can to make him like me, but he just won't, he won't trust me worth anything. He just, he, he, he just wants to throw me off his back. He's a bucking bronco. That's what he is. All right, hang on, hang on, hang on. Forget the kitchen for a little bit, and let's pull back on one worker. I'm going to go ahead and assign a couple of doctors. Maybe you just need some, like, literal tender loving care or something. Could that be a thing? Do you just need some of that? If I were to come over here and to pet you a little bit, would that make you happy? Would you trust me a little bit more? Would you be willing to take a nap on command? Here's my little balloon over here. He's flying up to your face and a couple little humans. Oh, he likes that. Oh, his tail's wagging and everything. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Maybe we just need to soothe the beast a little bit. <laughs> Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy, Anbu? 
Oh, that's a good boy. Yes, you are. Maybe now's a good time to finally get going on some extra resource harvesting. We can place a sawmill next to one of these giant logs that are on Yom uh, Ambu's back. I keep wanting to say Yombu for some reason. Um, I don't want to chop down some of these trees and stuff, though, so let's place it right up over here. I think that's going to be fine. It's going to knock out a couple berry bushes, but we have plenty more. We could also place down a quarry right over here. And these aren't infinite sources of resources, but they do have quite a lot in them, so it's going to take us a while to go through all of it. Just makes us a little bit more self-sustained than we were. If you're wondering, by the way, what these are, these are Ambu spikes, and you can mine them for some extra stone, but I guess they kind of hurt, and it makes Ambu pretty mad, so I don't recommend it. Oh, good lord, what is this thing? A large poison forest full of infested plants. Uh, okay, well... Normally, I would say we don't want to go down this direction, especially since I see there's a second one right here. Um, however, I suspect you guys would probably love to um, see what's going on in there. So, okay. I guess we're going to tell y uh, Anbu, again, Yambu, no, Anbu to go south, and we're going to try to make a mad dash through this stuff. But this is probably a terrible idea, and I'm going to start seeing this entire base turn into an infested heck hole. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead and make sure we have somebody working at the compost heap and, perhaps just as importantly, somebody working at the decontaminator. I'm also going to tell people to stop planting new plants because I suspect the more I place down, the more of a liability they are going to be. This stuff could very tur quickly turn into something pretty nasty for me. So harvest what you've got, but don't plant down anything else. And in the meantime, somebody grab a flamethrower. Oh, you think I'm kidding? These guys are literally walking around with little flamethrowers. Look at these guys. Look at them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. So, uh, all right. We're, we're about to get in there. All right. Yambu. Uh, Anbu. Um, I would say run, except you're already pretty sleepy. So my suspicion is this is not going to last for very long, but go ahead and charge through. Here he go. He doesn't trust me anymore. Gee, I wonder why. Okay. Well, cool. So here we are in a terrible place. Ah, there we go. Poisoned plants. Yep, 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 yep. These are the things right here. They're little poisoned plants. So we can harvest them. We need to find a way to, like, actually purge them, though. And there are quite a few. Here's some more poisoned plants. Looks like it's automatically been flagged somehow for the purpose of purging. So where are my little flamethrower buds? And what are they up to? There's one. Here we go. So he's coming over here, and he's burning it away. Perfect. Okay, that's exactly what I want you to do. So, yeah, they're looking for anything that gets poisoned, and they're automatically going to destroy it. Notice that we're starting to see some little blue goo seeping around here as this area becomes an infected mess. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't suppose there's, like, an actual, like, purge with extreme prejudice button, is there? Because that's what I need. So do you see why I've been trying to avoid some of these stinking toxic clouds so badly? This is exactly the reason why. It's freaking terrible. Look at this. You want to avoid this stuff as much as you can because it's the literal plague. It just keeps spreading around and infecting everything. Horrible. Horrible, horrible stuff. And in the meantime, poor anbu has been poisoned, so we're going to spend some of our herbs to try and heal him back up. He really needs a nap. Not a good spot for it, but it looks like he's decided to take one anyway. Oh, boy. Right. Yup, yup, yup. And this is the challenge of the game. As you play, your needs are going to continue to grow. Your population is going to continue to get more and more hectic. And overall, that's not so bad. But figuring out how to balance your colony's needs while also taking care of Anbu and trying to avoid hazards as much as you can and then deal with those hazards the moment you realize it's impossible to avoid them, that's the real challenge of the game. And that's something you don't really see in much of these survival colony builders. This is a very unique implementation of the survival aspect because it's really getting you in more ways than one. Oh god. Oh god, seriously, this infection's completely out of control. Oh no, I've doomed myself. Um, but literally, it's not just can you get enough food and water to survive, it's literally can you keep your mount alive, can you survive the world, because the elements are actively working against you, and in this case, I'm pretty sure I just signed my own death warrant by walking through toxic clouds. Oh gosh. If you were walking up there and you could not get any control of Ambu leading up to that choice, you actually would be completely hosed. That's why there's an incentive to just not ignore him. Don't let him just do whatever he wants. Ambu doesn't know what's best. Bless his heart. He's an idiot. 
he will lead you to certain doom, okay? <laughs> Get control of your dinosaur and make sure you navigate this world as safely as possible. In the meantime, though, I think that's probably gonna have to be a good place for us to end this particular video before I have to deal with the consequences of my actions. Thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you guys would like to learn more about The Wandering Village, there, of course, will be a Steam link in the description down below. My name is Provis. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time.